we're very privileged to have John um, working with us in our department as a volunteer, as a former patient who's undergone heart surgery. It's a very, very valuable service that he can offer to patients. They might open it up to him in a way that um, they don't to me and my colleague Liz, um, because obviously we haven't undergone heart surgery. We're very experienced and have seen many, many patients who have, but we haven't got that additional empathy of having undergone the procedure ourselves. So we find that John comes in, puts patients at ease. He's very, very helpful for our monthly pre-op information meeting as well, but also in meeting and greeting patients on the ward. And he's got a really, really good memory and he'll often remember who we saw the week before and he'll ask us how we're doing and things like that. So in many ways, it's more valuable than my memory. Uh, my story is called um, Just Two Minutes. And the story comes from a patient last year where I went into the room and there was a man there in his mid-fifties sitting in the corner and he looked terrified and scared. Uh, I explained who I was and what I was here to do as a volunteer and he said, uh, listen mate, I, I don't want to talk to you. And I said, look, I'm just, I've been through the experience myself. I'd had a open heart surgery, I had a quadruple heart bypass four years ago and all I can tell you is my story I'm a non-medical person and this is what I'm here to do, to try and lift you for, for your operation tomorrow. And he said, um, I'm not interested, can you please leave the room? So I said, I, again I tried, because I know I've got something to give him, I, I know I can make him feel better for tomorrow, by my experience. And he said, I'm too terrified and scared and I don't want to talk to anybody about what's happening to, to, to me tomorrow. So I walked away and halfway to the door I said, are you sure I just can't give you a quick chat and make you feel better? And he said, no mate, thanks very much, but no, can you leave the room? So when I got to the door, I persisted and I said, can you give me just two minutes of your time? And he stared at me for a good few seconds in that kind of look that he doesn't want to see me anymore. But reluctantly he said, okay, just two minutes. So I then went back, pulled in a chair, sat beside him, and within a couple of minutes, I got him listening. And then he started to talk to me and ask me questions. And after 15 minutes, I had a smile on his face and I couldn't get him to not talk. He was asking me so many questions and was almost, like, all, all, uh, almost getting excited about it. So um, the, point, the moral of my story is, is don't give up easily. There's no way that you can obviously pressurise patients into saying anything. But I just knew that this man was so low and so terrified of this operation tomorrow. I knew that I could make a difference. I just knew if he gave me some time and I got 50, a good 15 minutes out of him. And when he left, he had a huge smile on his face and he shook my hand and said thank you very much.